Welcome back to our healthy home. So today I'm gonna to show you the makings of my natural first aid kit. So of course you don't have to have all these different projects. Some are in between. I'm just gonna mention them because when I was thinking, what do I need to put in it? What do I wanna replace the items that we have in, in our last first aid kit? This is what I came up with. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. Well Okay, so let's start from uh, right to left. So over here, I wanted to have a, I always try to keep in every car and even in the house, some hand sanitizer, but I did want to mention it. So I just did rub an alcohol, a little vera um, juice, and then I actually just put in some pine needle oil. It is antibacterial. It actually can kill bacterial spores. So I put it in this pop top kind of container and all I have to do is label it so this is ready to go I wanted to show this is what the pine needle oil looks like and you can actually find this for really cheap and I found it in GNC so definitely worth checking out and I think that it is a good extra oil to put in there next I have to, um, well let's go into the aloe juice so I have this right here is just aloe vera juice um, and I wanted it instead of gel but you can use this gel and the reason why I didn't use a gel is because of the ingredients it's not 100% natural some things that I wouldn't actually use um, but I just had this in here just to have but I switched to this juice and it says that it's gonna last to 2026 so that was my only barrier to get in this so just put in this juice and that's gonna be used for if you have any insect bites or anything you really want to calm quickly you can have that here it's good for sunburns as well next I have two different options here so I am using a reusable jar um, so this was cinnamon but right now it actually just has bentonite clay in it and this could be actually be used for bleeding wounds to stop bleeding so you could actually sprinkle it right on it it would be good if you keep like the shaker top to be able to cut back on how much you actually use instead of doing big chunks um, and that is this product now if you don't have the mentonite clay do not fear because this is another reusable it had either peppercorns or uh, Himalayan sea salt in it but now I just switched it out and this is cayenne pepper and this can be used the same way just put it on a wound and it will stop the bleeding now, if you decide to make this kit, you're putting things together and you're dealing with different powders, you wanna, you might even need to wear a mask or something because it can really irritate your nose, inhaling all of the different powders. So, it's something to be mindful of. Along with that, I also have this coin tissue. Now, this can just be used with a couple of drops of water or you can use the aloe vera juice and it will just make it more like a rag and you can actually use that around a wound or if you wanna put it, you know, on your head or something like that I think it's just good to have and they're really small they are basically the size of a coin so this is what they look like so I'll be taking out a few of those and putting it in the kit and these are relatively inexpensive keep this in mind to go bag as well all right so then I was thinking of what other issues might I have so for headaches, I've showed you guys, and you can make this for headaches, you can make it for just if you're needing an, a boost or uplift, if you need to focus, all kinds of things, you can make different roller, bo roller bottle recipes. So if you do have a family, you wanna make one, like for myself, if you have small children, you can just make one that's safe for them. And you just wanna make sure you label everything as well if you're having multiples of things that might look similar that's why I actually went with different bottles here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and write on these containers what they are next I have cramp bark and I've talked about this but this is just for any kind of upset, upset stomach muscle cramps and of course for cramping during your menstrual cycle so this would just be added to water and it's really good as well almost forgot that this video is in collaboration with homestead in the hood and so the objective is during september which is national preparedness month she wants to get people much more prepared and so i'm happy to have done this video in collaboration with her i'll have her link down below and make sure you check her out sanitizer 
And since I'm using pretty thick labels, I'm gonna go ahead and put what's in it. Because if somebody else needs to use something, they need to know, oh, if it's not safe for kids or et cetera. So put the ingredients if you can, if it's something that people may have an allergic reaction to. I think color coding is a good idea. And just maybe, like for this, I know that all of the things that I would be taking internally is in this. So, moving right along, this is something that I've actually purchased. It was about $4. And looking at the ingredients, I could have, of course, made this myself. Um, I'll be talking about something else that I had soon. Um, but if you're not a do-it-yourself person, you can actually just buy this. It has sunflower oil, coconut oil, cashew oil, sunflower seed wax. Um, I would use beeswax because that's what I usually keep on hand. Eucalyptus, vitamin E, chamomile, dill wheat, lavender, patchouli, coriander. This chest rub is actually for opening up the nasal passages. So if they're having like runny nose or they're feeling like congested, you can um, rub it, you know, on their chest, on their feet, and this will help ease for the children. And this actually is for three months and up. Usually with essential oils, they typically say six months, um, but it says for three months, and I would say it's probably safe to do that with their recommendation. Next, for pain, and hopefully, well, this video won't be out, but maybe I'll put out the same week, and this is how you can actually make a pain or healing salve, like for the skin, and this is with comfrey oil and beeswax, and you can add essential oils, and you just rub it in if you have like muscle aches, or anything like that this is my in the making so these and you can actually see this one is further along I'm making one for myself one for my mother and this will actually be for just overall pain like back aches or anything like that so the ingredients that I have in here the yarrow is a floating um, down here we have the is white willow bark and I actually put a little bit of chamomile in here just to be soothing so that is these two tinctures that I'm making. Um, you can also make this with glycerin and water, but uh, I don't plan on giving it to my children. I'll just take it for myself in very small quantities, so it's okay for me. Next, you can also have just plain comfrey oil or frankincense infused oil as well to rub on your body. So frankincense is antibacterial. Um, and it also helps promote healing. So actually what I would do is like if my kids had a rash or something like an open sore, I wouldn't put it in it. I would just actually drop it right on the skin and tilt the area back like if it was on the arm. And it'll just naturally kind of trail down and go around the wound. And you can do the same thing with comfrey oil, which is in the making here. The next item I want to talk about and so this is cheesecloth inside of it i have plantain leaves now it's good if you keep the whole leaves and just have them dried out you can do the same with comfrey or any kind of healing herb but i wanted this because the plantain you can actually bring out like splinters bee stings it can also pull out dirt out of an open wound so i've just wrapped it in here and it was already double wrapped because cheesecloth can be a little bit thin and so when I actually need to use this, I went ahead and sewed the sides, but I left this middle part open so you can actually, you know, add something in or whatever later on. And then I would just fold it like this, or I could use it this way and just um, spread out the herbs. And you just put a little bit of warm water on top wherever you need it wrap it with some plastic and that's just gonna be your makeshift poultice and usually a poultice is made with a thin maybe kitchen towel you put the herbs inside or you can actually create fresh herbs or you just if you want to use fresh leaves you just crush them up in your hand release some of that oils and you go ahead and put it inside and have it warm or cold depending on what you want cold would be more like soothing and taking away inflammation and redness. Um, but this, you're gonna put a little bit of warm water and you wanna just draw everything out and you just go ahead and wrap it up. And what I'm doing for this is because you want the herbs to stay as potent as possible. You don't want them to get any kind of air exposure, uh, moisture or anything like that, of course, too. 
So I have like cellophane bags and you can get them in different sizes. And I'm just going to put this inside the cellophane bag. And then on top of that, I also have another bag here. And with that, I can actually shrink wrap it. And so that's just keeping it nice and tight. And if you don't um, have any sewing skills, I just used leftover thread that I already had a needle threaded and it took a minute. And so one side has blue, one side has red, doesn't matter. But you can also use some twine and do something similar, but you're just gonna have to be careful that nothing actually falls out. And then you can have them, just have a couple of them like this. And then you can label them and just put the date on them. And I would say, in your kit just go ahead and use stuff from your kit first like if it's something that actually happens at your house and you have access to other things go ahead and use this first and then just make a fresh one just so you know that it's going to be potent when you need it okay so last but not least i'm going to go ahead and make a liniment and a liniment is just used it's basically like a tincture but it's with either rubbing alcohol or with hazel I'm going to go ahead and use rum and alcohol. And when I actually use this, so this is the process of me making it. And it's going to take time, six weeks, um, for it to actually get extract all the nutrients out. But when I actually use it, I'm going to use like more like a peri bottle, one that has a spout top. And that way you can just squeeze it onto whatever area you need. And I'll dilute it with water about 50-50. It still will sting a little bit. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more bearable than just throwing alcohol in the wound. And so this would be used like on adults, wouldn't be used on my children. And so I'm going to go ahead, let's see, I use more than I expected there. Okay. And these clips are so cute. I always had a problem with not being able to find little clips when I needed it. So I'm just gonna, you use whatever you like. I just usually like to use three. So I'm using White Willow Bark. This is Calendula. And these are actually whole flowers. Calendula is good for healing. So that's what I'm adding. That one. And then last but not least and like i said use what you have on hand or what you prefer last but not least we're going to put some plantain in here again just for the benefit of drawing out so you determine whether you just want to use a liniment if you want to use a poultice whatever and i'm using a wide mouth jar just because it'll be easier to get them in there and i'm using an see an ounce of each To which next I'll be adding in my rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna have everything measured out. Actually, I'm gonna put a tad bit more. I'm gonna put more of the plantain. And now, how do you determine what needs to go into your first aid kit? Well, you know your family, what kind of bruises or cuts or accidents do you guys have? And so you just wanna go ahead and plan for that. And of course, you wanna make sure you have this stuff ready before you actually need it. going to just put and you don't have to do this with perfect mat a lot of times when when people make this they just put as much herbs as they want and cover And 
I actually, now that I think about it, I should have used this 24 ounce jar that I had. Um, and then the recipe did call for like a tad bit of witch hazel, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a teeny see bit more. And I'm just gonna put a top on it. You can, if you have like a metal lid, you can go ahead and write what it is on top. And we're just going to store this, let it infuse. Then I'll strain it. Usually I'll just put this onto whatever I'm putting it into. Use a smaller funnel and a strainer and collect the liquid. So this is the liniment. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do check out my playlist down below, my course, which you can get as a member or on my website. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Let me know what is your favorite item in the kit and what are the things that you make for your family. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.